What's up fellow engineers, Dr. McKay here and welcome back to my channel. And we're back again with Space Engineers. I am continuing my space shuttle build for Mod.io and, and finally we are at the Mod.io showcase. So, uh, as you're probably aware of my previous videos, when I post a video for the Mod.io showcase, it's essentially the build that will be going on Mod.io and you will be able to download it through Mod.io through the description in this video so as you as you've been keeping tabs on my channel uh, the last few videos I've been building the US space shuttle and man it has been a build and a half I have finally got it working all like autopilot I've got all of it kind of working the tips and tricks and how to work it so just basically this video is a uh, basic guide as well as a showcase of the bit the, the, of the build So with all that said if you like my channel and the stuff I do please hit that like button Let's try and get 10 likes and if you have any comments or queries Please leave me a comment and don't forget to subscribe if you already haven't so with all that said we're gonna jump straight into showcasing the uh, shuttle off so we just zoom out a minute to show you all what it is in its glory so basically what I've built, I've built the US Space Shuttle and basically I built a tower as well to go with it so it's all on a launch pad. Now in real life it goes to launch pad on a crawler and well obviously I ain't doing that on here. This is basically a static grid build with obviously the Space Shuttle that you can launch. Now there is a problem I haven't figured out yet and if you guys know how to sort it out please let me know in the comments. Or well, essentially when you, when you blueprint this in Alright, you will have to convert the space shuttle to a ship in the control menu, otherwise it will not fly. So just make sure you do that. So I'll go repeat again. You have to convert the space shuttle to a ship before you can fly it. So all that said on that bit, that's the only thing that's wrong. Yeah, I'll give you a quick dem quick tour of the, the ship itself. So we have the space shuttle orbiter I have built. Now this is a one-to-one -one scale of the real vehicle. I've used measurements I've got from NASA and obviously the internet. Uh, obviously it's not exactly the same proportions because like in the way like, say wingspan and and not an accurate shape because uh, space engineers is using square blocks and you can't really it's hard to mold specific shapes unless they're perfectly square. So I've done my best to mold the shape and I've got all the colours. I've named this one after my favourite shuttle, Discovery. Um, so yeah, obviously it's got the American like flag symbol there and on the other side we have a NASA symbol. That's a square circle because can't do a circle circle. Uh, it's got a fully functioning payload bay. It has obviously orbital maneuvering thrusters and essentially it works just like the vehicle in real life would. So. If you're interested in shuttles and how they fly, just go look up what, what, what just go look up what real shuttles fly, and well, you know you can basically take a judgment call from how mine works. So essentially, we come inside. We have a basically a pressurized area that has got a survival kit. Now, this in real life would be where the crew would sleep, uh, storage racks, and other things. And there's like another deck for other storage in the shuttle. And obviously, we come up this ladder. But I'm flying, so I'll just show you is the actual cockpit where we have the command seat, the co pilot seat, a bunch of displays, obviously, your, your windows to be able to see, and we have two extra passenger seats because the shuttle could hold seven, yeah, which is amazing to say the least, considering the Saturn V can only hold three, and obviously, we have an airlock here to go to the payload bay. So that's essentially the orbiter, and it's all its glory. Now, like I said, the payload bay does shut. So I'll just quickly demonstrate this here. So to show you what it looks like. But if I spawn it in with the payload bay closed, for some reason the blast door blocks along the like along that middle of that section there fuse together, and then you can't open the payload bay. As that was the problem in the last video. So if you watched the last one, you know, you know that the payload bay didn't open. That was the reason. So along with the uh, orbiter, I have built the um, uh, external fuel tank and the solid rocket boosters. Now the external fuel tank is connected with a connector to, at the bottom that basically powers the uh, shuttle's main engines. 
and it all does disconnect and in stages and all you have to do is press one button for the launch sequence to activate and it'll take you all the way to space to zero g and at zero meters a second and then you can do whatever you want to do in space it's all automated and it all works perfectly now i haven't actually tested it properly off the launch pad to space since i've um changed how i've connected it to the launch pad because if you look remember if you remember previously in my last videos i had four pistons coming off here going to connect to the solid rocket boosters because in real life the solid rocket boosters are bolted to the uh, <clears throat> launch pad and then as the shuttle's just about to fly it then has explosive bolts and then it lets go but there's also a like a connection on the shuttle which is what I opted for because I can use small grid and it kind of makes it a bit better but that I haven't tested properly yeah I've tested it in timer blocks like holding the shuttle in place and it, it does work kind of like a stack fire yeah I've tested it and it does kind of work so we have to wait to see so this is one of the things that we are testing mainly obviously I have a fuel uh, depot to our left that connects to the external fuel tank and we do have the buttons to separate so basically the next big thing on this uh, build is the launch tower now it does look quite bare but if I was to fill it out and make it look the part, then we would run our PC really quickly. So I've just done like a skeleton frame and concentrated on the basically the egress tower and um, or the egress elevator. But it's not an elevator; you just have to use jetpack. Uh, the egress arm, which is where the crew gets how the crew gets into the show, and basically there's a cap that in real life basically held the top of the external fuel tank, and that is like what I've done here basically a simple look like mechanism just just to add a bit more feature so we're gonna basically test fly this and show you like what we can do but we're not test flying this one right this one is just the uh, the one that I build and then I blueprint off and then launch others but this so this is basically like the template that I basically change and iterate depending on what's broken or needs fixing or needs changing so we are going to do to be flying this one, but this one's got a bit of a, a surprise inside. Yeah. For our first official mission, I'm going to be launching a piece of my, or the beginnings of my space station. Now, my space station I'll be launching with the show, and then connecting them all into orbit. So this is essentially the first module for my space station. Now, with the small grid, there's not a lot of internal decoration you can do. So, you know, forgive how spartan it looks. But we've got a nice projector that's got a few things going. we got a cryopod, survival kit, a control seat to control the module for maneuvering, if need be. A display, and hopefully it'll be pressurized, it should be. A storage, uh, not storage, a cargo container, H2O2 generator, oxygen tank, and essentially have like just that and lights and whatnot. Now this does have engines and windows and gyros, so it should work. So like I said, it's just basically a module and on each side is a merge block. Now if I quickly uh, take you just down to the bottom here. In in the shuttle, depending on which one you want me to blueprint, if you I might blueprint both, so you have an empty shuttle and a shuttle with a um, Sat or not satellite, a space station in, but essentially there's a merge block within the shuttle bay, right? That um, you will release to release the station, and then you will maneuver the because uh, I haven't actually done a Canada arm, I've just basically done it. So you release it, and then you move the shuttle away from the station, and then you kind of do an EVA to get the station up and running. So that is what we're going to be doing today for our maiden flight, <laughs> like proper maiden flight. So, let's just run you through what we have to do. Alright, so, when you, obviously, you can do whatever you like once you finish building your satellite or space station or whatever you want to do inside the payload bay. If you wanted just to fly it and fly it, but if you want to do it how I've done it, we basically come up here, onto the uh, tower. Like I said, it's a bit bare bones. Do it properly. Pretend this is an elevator do my best but I tried to make an elevator but it didn't work so we're coming up through here 
And now we come up to the egress arm. So if I just open that up, you'll be able to see what happens. We press this button. And the arm now pulls back in. It's pretty cool. Just wait for it to lock in place. Now we now we come through the gang the gangway into the white room. Now that closes the payload bay. So if you forget to basically close it, we can close it here. Or we can close it in the copilot pilot seat in a minute, which is what we're going to be doing anyway. This is just another place you can do it if you want to. So now we're in the white room. This is where like the astronaut go astronauts go through checks with the uh, um, lockout crew. So we open up the shuttle door and we can walk across and in we go. All right. So let's just shut this door as we're going to be flying in a minute. We don't want to have this door open. So we shut the door behind. Make sure we're good. We're good. And now come up into the cockpit and this is the thing we have this is the thing we have to do now you could uh, set up the tools in the one cockpit but for simplicity while showing you we are gonna have we got two cockpits we have to do we have to go in the right one first and this one all right forget the camera angle all right this one does the crew arm payload bay and I have timer block at the bottom for the uh, so, uh, external fuel tank basically cap so press that one and that moves out of the way ready for launch how cool is that and then on the second page I have switch lock and then release the fuel tank uh, the fuel tank the uh, fuel connector for the external fuel tank. So now we've done that, we come out of here and we go into this one, which is our basically our flight seat. Again, go to third person or first person because it is all made. So essentially, this is our rocket. Try to get a good angle for this. Now, before we take flight, we want to make sure that you have converted it to ship. So we go to the menu and go to Info and it'll be at the bottom where you see where you see the A and the uh, the A for select and B for back in the middle. If you if obviously I've already done it, but if it if you haven't done it, it will say press X to convert to ship, all right? And it'll basically just convert to ship. It won't blow up anything. It hasn't for me, so you should be okay. As long as you've connect, as long as you spawned it in in the ground and not hovering above it, you should be fine. So now we're all ready for launch. We're gonna basically. Press up and then just watch it go up into space. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press up and then I'm just going to let the uh, camera go. But I'm going to basically, as I'm going up, I'm going to basically change the direct the direction of the shuttle. So we are solid rocket boosters and our fuel tank, when they fall back down, will land on the ice and maybe hit our towers. So we want to basically make sure we don't do that. So we're going to press up now. So five, four, three, two, one main engine start solid rocket booster start release from the pad do it nice and off we go now you may hear some clanging uh, don't be alarmed that's just essentially the shuttle's main engines knocking around a little bit because obviously it's a small grid to large grid and it don't then Clang does not like it when I do this, so. But it's fine. I've launched this beast a few times and no explosions, so we are good. So we just now have to wait for it to go up to our staging. So I'm just going to fast forward so we get there a bit quicker. So I'll see you in a minute.
And we're back. So, welcome back. We are coming up now to booster separation at just over 20,000 meters. This is all automated, so you know, if you're flying this, you shouldn't have worries about doing stage separation. Just go basically watch the boosters fall away. So, we're coming up now to 20,000. Uh, it's just over. Obviously, the timing is not actually precise because it takes a while to. For some reason, the timer blocks aren't exactly proper seconds, they're slightly longer. So boost separation I think now or coming up. Also I keep getting lag spikes because I've used up all my PCU with the two shuttles. So where's this boot where's the stage separation? There it is. So is there stage separation of the boosters? And we're still going up. I was a little worried that the weight of the uh, station inside would stop us, but we are still hitting that hundred meters a second mark. So as long as uh, nothing else changes, we should get all the way to external fuel tank separation and then we should end up in zero G without touching anything else. So I'll fast forward it to the bit where our, the external fuel tank separates at just uh, about 34 or 35,000 meters. So I'll see you in a minute. And welcome back. We are at 31,000 meters and we are expecting the fuel, the external fuel tank separation to occur at any point now. I can't remember the exact uh, altitude. I believe it's about 34, 35 because we need a drift. So let's just hope we can uh, do this right. This is like, I haven't really tweaked anything since the last launch, so hopefully we should be a uh, on track for zero g at zero meters a second without pressing anything so we are coming up now to 34,000 meters still waiting on that external fuel tank to separate oh, i'm a little nervous and this is the game imagine how the real nasa uh, flight team would be th and astronauts are worrying when they're in a space <laughs> in the space shuttle in real life back in the day there we go. That's the uh, boost, uh, the external fuel tank separation. We shouldn't have any issues here. Obviously, our thrust pushes us away from the external fuel tank as long as you don't touch nothing. So now we are drifting, and it should take us to the magical number of zero g at about forty-two thousand meters a second. Uh, meters a second, forty-two thousand meters. Now we do slow down, we don't have to do nothing at this point. Like I said, it's all automated. We should have enough uh, delta V and, and velocity to keep us going to that uh, zero G. But obviously if we don't, we do have enough uh, uh, basically thrust to get us there if you're, if you're shy, but it should be alright. I think it really depends now on the weight of what you build inside the shuttle bay. Yeah, but essentially I have done it so we do go over to the uh, zero G at about 50 meters a second so we got plenty of uh, room for error if we uh, have a bit too much weight than we normally think but we are at 82% uh, hydrogen left so that's about right for fuel and we are gaining because I do have the H2O2 generators on board with a cargo container full of ice now obviously this is what's on the build straight away so obviously if you're doing this in survival I'm not sure how it would work you just have to get mine as much ice as you possibly could so yes, we're coming up. To, we're above 40,000 meters now, and we're still at 60 meters a second. So we've just got another 2,000 meters to go, and we'll be in zero g. And then the RCS will activate on the shuttle. So I'll just zoom in on the shuttle here in a minute. Yeah, it is actually a really lovely build. I do like enjoy building these on Space Engineers. Such a passion of mine to basically uh, spaces. I love space, yeah, and to build these iconic uh, ve vehicles in Space Engineers just makes that reality of mine like a little bit closer. Yeah. Yes, it's a game, I know, but 
it's just just good yeah so we are approaching zero g now i'm checking the uh, p gravity at the bottom so we're in zero g now so our, our rcs should kick in and we are at 43 meters second we won't slow down until those rcs turn on so anytime shuttle when you're ready don't tell me it's crashed So the game did crash on me, but we're going to continue the game from where we left off. Obviously, the reason why it crashed is probably because I maxed out the PCU. So we're just going to do continue game and see where it left off. Now, looking at the picture, we are in space. Let's just hope that's the case. You know, uh, I haven't had the game crash on me like this for a long time. The last time it crashed on me like this was... Ooh, I think when I spawned in about 20 planets like in close proximity to each other testing out at the spawning planet button so now that was actually a long time ago so this this is new yeah don't don't panic isn't isn't just ain't the build that's made it freeze it's the fact that the pc's pc limit is like just shy of like ten thousand. but we are Ah, so we're still we're still cruising. So it's it saved us just as uh, we separate from the external fuel tanks. It's not too bad. So we're gonna let basically carry on where we left off. Yeah, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna stop talking a minute until we uh, come to a stop with the RCS. So we'll skip ahead. So I'll see you in a minute. so we are back and we have now reached zero g as you're probably aware of the footage i just noticed that my wheels are slightly bugging out not sure why i'll have to check that in the uh as it's on the launch pad maybe it's just to do with something to do with the uh um height wheel offset and stuff like that so i just have to quickly tweak that but there's our rcs now they've come on so we should now stop to zero G and now we're in a uh, zero G so we no longer need this toolbar we are now in the second one this second one is obviously RCS as well as the payload bay so now we are in zero G just make sure that external fuel tank ain't gonna cut my bum let's just uh, move out the way right. so I'm actually not sure if that external fuel tank <laughs> drops back down to the planet or um, flies off into space yeah we did separate roughly at the same time but I did thrust up by looking at it it looks like it's coming this way so so we just have to make sure that we don't get hit by the external fuel tank so just move out of the way and watch it as it passes us by now in reality uh, the external fuel tank will drop back down to the planet earth and splash into the ocean Simply because when it obviously space engine is not like real life, but when you in real life, uh, the shuttle goes up at an angle to basically become horizontal with the planet. And as the external fuel tank basically drops, um, obviously the shuttle is not in an orbit. It uses the orbital move maneuvering thrusters to then increase the speed to get into orbit. You know? And then the fuel tank obviously basically plummets. So bye bye fuel tank. So now we're obviously uh, safe for not getting hit by that. Let's open the payload bay. And look at that. Nice. Alright, now I just need to uh, put the uh, payload bay merge block in the toolbar because I actually haven't done that yet. So it is block cargo release. That's the one. So now we are in space. Where do we want this thing? Well, <laughs> let's just go over here a minute. Just out of the way of any any form of interruption from down there. Obviously, we have a satellite. You have two satellites over there. So this this would be a good idea, a good place to do it. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna basically release from the uh, the merge block pull back a little bit so it centralizes itself within the payload bay and then we're going to drop using the B button so we're now stationary release the merge block pull back a little bit 
I'm gonna press B. And there it goes. How cool is that? Right. You wonder what I'm doing? I'm just getting it close enough to the uh, airlock. Right, that'll do. <coughs> now we're <coughs> now we're stationary. We gotta go through our airlock. There it is there. <laughs> That's all the air. Now the next thing I could build to bring up here is an airlock. Could have built an airlock on here to be fair, there's plenty of room. Alright. So we're in, so we now need to come into the uh, control seat and swap off your buttons. Now you can do all the buttons you like or whatever. So we need groups. We want our thrusters on and our shoulder array to uh, basically come out. So there's our shoulder array. And now we have ions. We are now a free bird. So that's our space station. Well, wow. starts of our space station. So I can basically leave it on now and it should basically just stay in basically this place. We have plenty of power, only 5% power is being used and we got plenty of batteries and we got the solar arrays to recharge. So, obviously not ideal to let all your atmosphere out every time, that's a lot of O2 wasted. Shut the door behind ourselves. Get back to the shuttle, and now what we're going to do to finish it off, we are going to be doing a landed attempt. And this time, I think I've managed to uh, figure out where I went wrong last time. So, I'll guide us through the um, landing. So, here we go. So let's leave our space station there. We're gonna basically shut our payload bay doors. We're gonna basically reorientate ourselves towards the planet. We will basically aim for the ice because that's the flattest surface you can land on and you don't have trees. You know, because trees are a pain in the ass. So essentially, what you wanna do, you wanna throttle up until you get to, well, until you hit the planet's gravity, essentially. So, use your planetary markers, obviously that beacon in front of us is at 43, so once we get down to 42 and a bit, we should be hitting the gravity. And, well what I'll do is, I'll, like I said, I'll fast forward through um, the long arduous descent until we get to the crucial stage, but you'll be able to see what I am doing in regards of manoeuvring the shuttle to land. Um, obviously now we're at 75 meters a second, you can just turn off your engines to save on that hydrogen. And now we're basically a glide. Now we're in the uh, uh, planet's gravity now. So, yeah. Like, this is a space station up there. How great is that? Now, you could obviously build wherever you want. Yeah, but I'm, I want to try and build a space station and use the shuttle to fly it. Now, if you w would like to see me uh, uh, launch and dock each aspect 
of the station together until we get a nice big station. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see that. If not, that's something I can do off off screen. You know, there is a new game that is uh, coming out soon, which is called Mars Horizons, which is a basically kind of like a space simulator game. It's well, basically, you take control of a, um, a space agency in the 1950s. So, I NASA, the European Space Agency, Russia, I think maybe China. Not quite sure about China, but China is in the game at later on, I think. All I've, all I've seen is a few of the beta, beta playthroughs. So, I don't know properly. But, like, essentially, you, you basically recreate historic launches. And, and basically, your, your entire goal is to get to Mars, I believe. But you can go around the entire system, solar system. So I've obviously pre-ordered that and I'm going to actually maybe do my first play, th play session streaming so you guys can watch on YouTube channel. I don't know how long it'll be. I have read that it's a lot of uh, reading and learning involved in the game because it's quite realistic. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. And if you like it, you know, like you do Space Engineers I'll, and you want me to carry on that, then I'll carry on that. But at the minute we are... Focusing on space engineers for the next few videos because I'm enjoying doing it. I do have a Sea of Thieves video coming out a bit maybe the, at the end of the week, but it's a four hour long video. I am wor I'm cutting down to half an hour, so it's a, it's a tough one. So you know, they take longer to do than these ones. So yeah, let's uh, skip ahead. Well, not skip ahead, let's fast forward to landing. I'll see you in a minute. Oh, one last thing, make sure you skip to this page, which is the third page in toolbar, because this is all your landing uh, landing stuff. The top one is your, um, basically your wind, which is, <laughs> not your wind, but your air. This is the bottom hydros, the uh, right is the RCS, and obviously down is your landing gear, and left is your landing gear lock, so your gear doesn't fall away when you land. Which is one of the problems I had before with the front one, where you land, it will just fold back up inside. So, yeah, make sure you lock your gear before you land. But with that said, we are still coming in, so I'll see you in a minute. Right, welcome back. Um, essentially, as we're coming up, uh, coming down now to uh, 10,000 meters, once we hit 10,000 meters, we want to turn on our, uh, basically our landing hydros to gain that wind resistance type of feel. Because, yeah, the, the shuttle, in space engine, there's no air. So we have to compromise with these hydrogen thrusters. So we basically turn them on now to make sure they're on. And that basically gives us the, uh, basically the feel of air and uh, basically gripping whatnot. So I see it's slowing down now if we wanted to, but we don't want to because I use up fuel. But I'm, as you can see, I'm trying to keep away from landing on the ice in that type of sense. I want to kind of come down over the grass and then land on the ice just in case I run out of ice for the landing because last couple times I land down too hard because I was going too fast and I come down too steep so this time I'm going to basically come down very shallow is it shallow is the word I'm looking for you know and then slowly touch down about 50 meters a second I've tested it and the wheels can withstand 50 meters a second but to do that you need to turn on your 
reaction control systems to basically slow down. So we'll get to that in a minute. It's just getting down there now. We're at 6,000. So what I normally do, I normally aim for like see where see where that like crack is. I'll point the crosshairs there. Obviously, this won't be like your game, but this is what I'm doing. I get a point of reference there. Basically, where I want to go, and I want to come down then down the hill. As you can see, we're at 4,000 meters now, and I want to come down the hill and then land on the ice. So I'm aiming for that, and then I'm going to start turning when I get to about 2,000 meters, and then. Hopefully, come across the ice and kind of land, you know, yeah, and then land. Yeah, uh, on the ice. <clears throat> so now we're coming up to two thousand meters. I'm going to pan around, so we basically get that stop. There we go. And like I said, having those hydrogen thrusters just makes it feel like we're flying through the air, which we're not, but we are. But we're still listing, so what we'll do now, we're going to turn our reaction control on, and that should straighten us up. It won't slow us down until we actually get vertical. But it should basically stop us from listing to the, the right there, as you can see. So we're coming down to about a thousand meters. So once we hit a thousand, we want to put our land legs out. Land legs are deployed, and we're going to lock them in place. They are locked. Now this is the tricky bit now. I'll come over the ice a bit much, I think. Our RCS is still on though. Keep your vehicle at the horizontal plane. This is going to be dicey. Now I'm going to straighten up. Uh, 300 meters. Still falling. Two hundred meters. <laughs> Switch to the next page for parachute deploy. Uh, 150 meters, gonna run out of ice in a minute. Vehicle is slowing down. Let's get that nose up a minute. We need to slow down a bit more. We're slowing down, we're at 60 meters a second. Slow down, slow down. We are parallel, we are parallel. 43, <coughs> 45 meters a second. We're going to touch down. Nicely. Come on, come on. Pressing B slightly. Black wheels are down. Touch down. Parachute. Go to the next page. Turn off. And now we should come to a lovely stop. Oh, there goes the front wheel. And there we go, we have stopped. Now the front wheel destroyed itself, probably because of the weight of the vehicle. These wheels aren't probably designed to carry this much weight. But those are uh, the big five by five wheels won't fit in the in the uh, fuselage. So yeah. Well there we have it. A successful I call that successful even though the wheel did break. A successful landing. And now you have seen me land it and you know how to we've got to get it under 50 meters a second before we touch down so yes let's uh get out Woof! straight down the uh the old <laughs> hole there let's get out and let's have a look yeah the only damage is a lost wheel so there we have it then folks, that is the uh, Space Shuttle 
uh, build that I have built and it will be uploaded to mod.io when this video goes live so check the description in the video to be able to follow the link to mod.io to be able to download it if you have any questions or queries about the build please leave them in the comment section below and if you like the video and the stuff I do smash that like button and yeah, try and let's try and get 10 likes and if you haven't already please subscribe my subscriber count is going up nicely and I thank all of my subscribers for subscribing to my channel. It does mean a lot and it encourages me to basically get more creative and make better videos. I've been Dr. McKay bringing you my space shuttle build for mod.io showcase. Thank you for watching. Fly safe and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.